Hello there, Beard here. And you guys got. So Matt's actually missed his cue to tell us all about these players. <laughs> I've had an idea. Who wants the idea? Who wants the idea? Who wants the thumb police? <laughs> Kami. So Kami is a little bit unusual. When Sherwin and I were chatting about Kami, um, we liked the idea of a, uh, a footballer who wasn't really a footballer, so she, we gave her guns. <laughs> kind of makes sense, right? So it would be remiss of me when we're talking about Kami, who is a pistolier, to ignore the obvious pun of how great a shot she has. <laughs> <laughs> no, Kami, Kami has a great shot. Uh, she's not terribly worried about the ball. In fact, she likes killing the ball dead. So, next up, third place. Uh, good afternoon, handy listeners, such as you are. And welcome to this, our fifth, I want to say, rapid rookie roundup. Have we, um, sixth. Sixth. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. Um, and as I am joined, as ever, uh, by the ineffable Mr. Panzer Harris. Hello, Ben. How are you? Hello, Beard. I'm good, thanks. You good, self? Yes, very well. Warm and sticky, as is the way in London. Um, so fresh from Nationals at the weekend, and we've had the models up for pre-order for a little while with no real idea of what's coming although we did see flea revealed at the british nationals over the weekend but we will not be starting with flea which was a surprise to me um but rather we'll be coming firmly into your territory chat and having a quick look at cami <laughs> that was, like i know you were very keen for nomad for alchemists during the free cities draft is that right am i remembering that right Oh yeah, yeah. There were I, I enlisted uh, Simon Matlas' help for many, many memes. Um, <laughs> I was actively campaigning for Nomad, uh, uh, and when people meme were coming Lord, up to, as he is. oh, absolutely, uh, that boy has far too much talent. The that... meme pro, I think he referred to himself as. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not giving him that one. <laughs> no, but now and now that boy's been yeah. nerfed. Um, certainly, the meme the meme generation has slowed. But fair enough, we don't have <laughs> quite as much mighty need. Um, yeah, let's start with the model because people have seen that for a little while. Um, yeah, what do you reckon? Have uh, the render is at some weird angle, and it made her look yeah. like she had legs about you know a third of the length they should be. But having seen the actual model, um, you know, in oh, the flesh, you have, yeah, yeah, they, they were in the cabinet up at nationals. The, uh, the this wave, and yep, that's much better. Okay, it it really was photoed at an odd angle, but yeah, I, I like it. You got that yeah. traditional. She looks. It's sort of like gut, original Gutters pose. Um, okay. You know, one yeah, yeah. one gun down, one gun up. Um, but Gina, she's she's a bit more upright. I do quite like the guns. Yeah, they're me like, too. They're like they're they're quite giant and comical, and they don't look at all look like flintlock pistols. But <laughs> at the same time, they they firmly um, they firmly look like something that could exist in this world. If I remember rightly, the Engineers Guild have a hand in the manufacture of a lot of the Alchemist Guild stuff, which is where the shared use of compound comes from. I can't remember season one fluff. Um, yeah, that, that um, yeah, I think Pinvice w- wiped his mind and rebuilt him and gave him as a gift to cement an accord or something. That's got yes. all kinds of Winter Soldier style connotations and, to and it. And it's pure pin voice as well. So That's very true. <laughs> um, so you hopefully have now seen the art. Um, I do really like... Because there were some really nice parts within her story that um, Beth has very thankfully and very grateful voiced on the Tales of the Free Cities. Bits that I really liked and I wondered how those details were going to transfer across 
One was her rather eclectic way of constantly making her own clothes every day. That you know, she'd disappear <laughs> off into her room in the mansion and re-stitch everything together. So I do quite like you've got like this kimono style top, mm. and then uh, like the tabby below um, in wildly different colours. And I, I I hope that people painting her, her up maintain the sort of colour clash that's gone on in the artwork and realise that why that's happened. Uh, yeah, I'm, I mean, deliberately with my alchemists, I've not, no, I've not done a kind of a, a cohesive team's color scheme for them, yeah, um, because they are a bunch of scientists, and most scientists I know are the most, you know, they are a group of people that will deliberately all pull in different directions anyway. So you know, because yeah. somebody tells them everybody turn up in green, half of them will turn up in red. So um, yeah, I, I'll that, that's to, my excuse. At, at some Sorry. point, I'll tell you the story of a friend of mine who is a scientist who we found passed out in his lab with a giant electromagnet strapped to his head, bleeding from his nose in a desperate attempt to give him superpowers. Um, <laughs> but that is not a story for this. Uh, that is not a story for this podcast. Um, I like that she appears to be wearing, um, uh, is it Nerigawa, the like the traditional lacquered style samurai um, tassets coming down from her waist because of course numisai being you know the parallels with japan with feudal japan being the obvious comparison and then she's just got all this stuff strapped to her um, i think that's all the rounds for the guns because they are yeah, so she's yeah. essentially it's like a mini grenade launcher rather than the it pistol looks, yeah think. yeah that that's kind of how it looks to me is that quite that uh, like that m60 style pig um <laughs> grenade launcher the underslung for the m16 just like firing off these vials like whether they're like these pneumatic pistols that just launch chemical infusions at people um the only thing i don't really like about the artwork is that the whole way through her story she is unrelentlessly cheerful or relentlessly yeah. <laughs> cheerful i should say you know she's this just and I, when i was talking to beth about how how i wanted her voice was just to be oppressively happy um, because that's <laughs> certainly how the character like leapt off the page to me, and she seems a bit dour in her picture here with the alchemists. Now, whether that's just because she's been hanging out for the alchemist for a while, hey, um, or <laughs> yeah, she's seen you, the alchemist Facebook group. <laughs> she's seen the alchemist Facebook group exactly, um, or whether that's you know you did see in her story when she was leaving with uh, Yachiro. I want to say that's the fella. Yep. Um, you know, she she does seem angry at her father. She does seem like to have like the mood has swung. So has that been like a permanent change in her demeanor now that she's a, a pro baller, or am I reading too much into the fact that she's just got a scowl in her artwork? Who can say? Um, but yeah, I think she looks very like when like you know, they came out with the idea of Oriental gunsmith. Part of me yawned. Because it's such a trope, <laughs> um, yeah. but now I see her in the flesh, and it's like, oh no, actually, that's quite cool. <laughs> I like that, I like that. Um, but I, which I certainly, yeah, Cammy was never on my my radar for any of the teams that I wanted to to draft her uh, in the free cities draft. But let's have a look at the actual card. Now you're our resident resident lab rat, so you can tell me whether or not these statistics are abnormal. Um, seven nine move feels about right for for your lot. Yeah, um, I'm not sure how much how much other seven nine we've got, but it's a very fast team. There's lots of six eight, um, lots yeah. of extra bible dodges flying around. Um, so yeah, I, I, I don't think there's an, no vitriol's a seven nine. Yeah, like even yeah. compound can go eight inches on the sprint. So um, yeah, it's not yes. a surprise to see you know, that kind of movement stat. On uh, on the alchemists, neither is the one inch melee. No, no, that's 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 one thing I'm hoping for for lamp lighters. Lamp lighter, it's a mean prize. <laughs> long pole. If that is indeed who they are, cool. Tack yeah. four. Like again, that feels about mm. right. You've never been the biggest. You know, you don't throw a lot of dice unless it's a character play. Uh, I, I think I think virtually everybody's tack five. Hmm. Um, he says just checking uh, GB Keeper, but no, yeah. Well, yeah, fair enough. Uh, kicks, that seems about right. 5-0 um, defence, that seems pretty good, actually. Yeah. Uh, um, a- again, Vitriol Midas, 5-0. Uh, mm. Oh, I always forget about Midas as a 5-0. Not a 5-1 mm. like he used to be. Bloody hell. <laughs> uh, t- standard influence stat, 12 wounds. I mean, more wounds than Vitriol, right? Yeah, yeah. 
Like she she feels reasonably survivable for an alchemist. Like they they still appear to me to be a team that survives a lot like hunters does via its positioning rather than its stats. Yeah, I mean farmers still just walk up and buy them off the pitch, but so uh... <laughs> Yeah. That, that's a horrendous matchup anyway. Let, but once, once you're, I'm once, getting flashbacks once, already. <laughs> well, I mean, once you're engaged with them, yeah, they're, you know, they're just going to two damage you off the field in, in six mm-hmm. influence, but that's fair enough. Um, but yeah, 12, infl- like 12 health seems okay for an attacking midfielder for for Alchemist. Not, you know, she's not a brewer by any stretch of the imagination, but she doesn't really need to be. Um, playbook seems single-purposed. Yeah. Like, I'm okay is, with that being the purpose. This is the first playbook I've ever seen without a single damage result. Yeah, for for reasons which were teased at Vengeance and are on the back of this card. Yes. Yeah. So what was the one that went up? At, was it Dead Eye that went up at Vengeance? Yeah, that was the one. So when this model makes a successful attack, it may add an additional Guild Ball playbook result. Now, yep. this is this is an interesting one, um, because. Uh, the way it's worded, and like, if you compare it to something like, say, tooled up, mm-hmm. which is um, may add plus one damage to character plays that cause damage and to playbook damage results. So this isn't; it may add an additional ca- um, guild ball to a playbook result. It's uh, oh no, it is, isn't it? So it's a, I, can, I can't work out from the wording of this if I'm adding if I wrap, do I get it twice? Uh no, because mm, it's what what you can do is because it's a it's at the top of a book as well. If you mm. take that, you can get du- yeah, you can yeah. get double guild ball. But what I mean, let's say for example, I got five net hits and I wanted to do a momentous push dodge guild ball thanks to did I, and then on the mm-hmm. wrap do a momentous dodge. Do I get to add another guild ball? And I can't quite work out personally whether it's one or the other. I'd say no, um, because it's when it's he makes a successful res- attack. Yeah, and it's also it's playbook results, not playbook results. Like yeah. like tooled up is tooled up is very purposefully pluralized, um, yep. whereas this isn't. Let, let's look at a couple of comparators. Where's mm. Edge um, and the and the hunters stuff? Let's have a because they look. get extra results based off snared. Mm. Yeah, uh, so Edge, when this model makes a successful attack, it may add an additional double dodge playbook result. So that's near enough identical. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so, so yeah, I, I, I'd say if you wrap, you still only get it once. I think you only get it once. But hopefully that's something that maybe will be clarified in a Steamforge blog, or we can ask directly to the developers at some point. But even if it is... Because um, it's, it's similar to Avarice and Greed's Thuggery, because it's not... You add a mm. knockdown to every single result... You do your thing, and then there is a an additional knockdown at the end. I don't get to yeah. knock you down twice unless I choose the knockdown result. Mm-hmm. Um, it's still amazing. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, so chemical ordinance is her character play that will be triggered by said uh, dead eye of choose either the burning or the poison condition. A target and enemy model suffers within six inches suffers one condition damage, so presumably ignores tough height, which is very yep. good. And said chosen condition. Yep. Um, and she can just keep doing this and keep doing it. And it happens off every single result. So presumably if you hit the non-momentous guild ball on four, you're doing it twice. So yes. either you're doing two damage and poison and burning, or you're shooting multiple people, which just sounds cool. Um, <laughs> and then sort of tie that together with formination. Yep. So you're getting dodges off um, Midas's new um, legendary that he's got. She, now, admittedly, she's only attack four, but I mean, I've I've often been quoted as saying, "Yeah, you, I only really look at the first two columns of a, of a model's playbook if to, to determine what I'm going to be doing with their playbook." And you know, mm-hmm. not every not every model is going to is is playbook centric, and I think Cammy's one of them because with a momentous tackle on one with an anatomically precise model like. Attack four is fine, yeah. Um, particularly with her trait elusive, meaning that she can teleport into base contact with something within four inches, which doesn't have to be enemy, doesn't have to be um, friendly. So you know you can bounce off cats forty mil base, or um, 
you know, if you've got poison or burning on on vet cat, because a fifty mil base is the best thing to bounce off. Yeah, I mean, and let's, let's not forget chemical ordnance has got a six inch range on it. Yeah. So so you can you know you charge a model that's within ten inches, you shoot another model that's four inches away, then you bounce to the far side of that other model that was four inches away, and then yeah. dodge again. Uh, I mean, for, the, for, yeah. for the kind of people that enjoy non-linear goal threats, of which I know you're one. Oh hell yes. <laughs> I I can I imagine that you know, you've already got something ridiculous planned for this woman. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, I, yeah. Um. Having having been on the play test, I got six goals with her in three games. <laughs> All right. So fair enough. yes. Um. Yeah. This this is right in my particular wheelhouse. Uh, and I guess and also I with that very much. With that elusive um, trait, you're really going to get around all of the goalkeeper positioning tech. So yep. whether that's the compounds or prides of this world with countercharge, or whether that's knuckles and skulk with lightning reflexes, a, a place ignores everything. Yeah, um, it, it's also a good way around unpredictable movement should she need that as well. Oh, that's so a great you- shout so you can shoot, say, say butchers are at the up the usual game. The ball's hidden on brisket. Mm. Uh, you know, you you can shoot boar who's three zero. Um, put this, put the uh, six inch condition out onto brisket and then place into her. Yeah. So um, and not to top it all off, kill the ball. Yeah. Yep. Which um, yeah, we've seen in you know what blacksmiths. Um, blacksmiths have a number of places and effectively rats and. Um, miners um, yeah. have similar effects of doing it, and it is an incredibly useful. You know, if you're just popping the ball in the corner, so you know smoke can wear people down, and then make use of abilities like kill the ball once an opponent has dedicated resources to going to that side of the pitch. That's a great sort of refused flank footballing t- um, tactic. I don't imagine it's going to come up a lot on her card. Uh, it it might do a fair bit because having having kind of mainlined alchemists. Uh, since they came out and see, since the season four version mm. came out for about, I think that's the longest I've stuck with a guild was was a sticking with them till four came along. That's a separate issue. Yeah. Um, but a common defence I'd see people do is like just punt it away from the strikers. Yeah, you know, um, to where Vet Calc or um, or, Ca- or um, Crucible can't get to it. Just put it out over there. Cammy's going to get to it. She's got. Yeah. That that's a fifteen inch threat, uh, you know. If somebody's uh, somebody's just stomped the ball off and hoped it works out for them. So, um, sort of the main questions that we were going, we've been sort of asking when we've seen all of these rookies is, is you know, sort of twofold, and that's one: what are you expecting for Cami when she's fully loaded with four influence? Uh, she's exceptional at spreading, burning, and poison, which is extremely useful both as a mm. both as chip damage and as a resource. Um, and the fact that you've got uh, momentous dodge, one condition damage, burning poison on one, uh, on an anatomically precise model, you'd have to say even with my dice, statistically, you're going to get that <laughs> most mo- with the most uh, most of your attacks. Um, so yeah, and, and then the crazy pinball goal run is definitely a thing, especially with that elusive trait. Yeah. Um, and so the opposite to that then really is, what are you expecting here with no influence? I don't think she can do it next. Pretty much nothing. Yeah, and I think that's kind of her downfall is that she appears yeah. greedy. Yeah, she she needs at least one or two to to do something. She's she's not a battery. No. Um. So if you're going to get the, mo- it's it's not you know you can stick Benny in the middle of the pitch and give him no influence or game and he'll be fine. Mm-hmm. Um. I don't think there are many of those models in um. In alchemists, you know, they have a lot of ways of making use of conditions to make themselves yeah. more influence efficient. But to be influence efficient, you still need influence. Yeah, exactly. I, I think that's um, that's kind of the balancing trait of them. Mm. Because if you if you could have you know two or three batteries and then still get you know all of the free stuff off conditions, mm. you know that I can see how that could get oppressive very quickly. Yeah. Um, and with, I suppose, with with her coming and with the changes to Vet Cat, who's making room for her in in the in the twelve? Because that looks like a very tight twelve right about now. Oh yeah, um, the 
because I think now you've genuinely got a position where every single player is viable. Yeah, uh, and I know, know I think Union's gone recently. Yeah, sucks because now I don't have a painted twelve anymore because I had snakeskin in it. But that's a separate <laughs> problem. <laughs> Um, yeah, because th- because now you know, I, I, having gone around, because you know, I've got a bit of a vested interest looking at how new vet cat was going down. Yeah, and he was making lots of other people go down, and so it's like, oh, okay, he's back. Yeah, three damage on one will do that. Yeah, that, that, that that's a good thing. That's With a thing. Tack seven or tack eight. Tack know. eight. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Um, so yeah, it, it's extremely tight. So it's going to come down to play style. You know, how, how do you want to play? Which way are you going to battery? Are you going to bias your team? Sorry. Mm. I mean, in my in my case, it's probably compound drops down. Um, yeah, I can see that. I, th- I think because it's the way not I the play, way you play, yeah. No, uh, I mean, okay, I do I do love the fact that I painted your beard and no fun for you on his apron. But, uh, <laughs> Thank you. All. Yeah, and that's so, not a problem you, now. And when I ran Alchemist at tournaments in season three, I was very much of the the Olympic ring smoke style. Yeah. Um, so having compound made a great deal of sense for me because I didn't leave my deployment zone. Um, but yeah, I, don't, I think you can theoretically still play that kind of team, but I'm sure. just not going to. No, no, and I, it makes perfect sense for you to drop compound. Is is, mm. is kind of what I mean. Whereas I can also I understand that Vitriol gets left behind by a lot of people because her linear she has a very very linear goal threat. Where yeah. um, veteran calculus and now veteran Cami and new Midas don't. You know they're going to do things in a much in a much better way. Or much, yeah, I mean. Much more sideways fashion, perhaps I should say. Yeah, the, the established wisdom, and much, much though I'm firmly with Steve Cole on this, that the, the established wisdom is wrong, um, seems to be to leave veteran calculus out. I'm mm. like, what are you doing? She's a, again, she's a brilliant non-linear goal threat because you have a very long reach and you have a four-inch condition-removing dodge, mm. and you've got a three-eight kick. So no, I'm not leaving her out. I don't. I think I've played like three games without her ever. Yeah. You know, um, I've been leaving O calculus out, but then having tried her in with the smoke team, it's like, oh, I need to find a space for her. <laughs> Actually, I might need this lady. Perfect. Yeah. So, so hopefully, um, oh, dropping things. Uh, hopefully, Alchemist enjoying your new attacking midfielder. I'm sure. I think she's one of those models where there's going to be a whole bunch of people that are like, yeah, she's going to be in my six every time, and there's going to be some people that go, she's never making my twelve. And yep. I think they're, I think they're both right quite frankly um and it's going to be <laughs> interesting to see what gets done with her and whether that is enough to sort of bring the alchemists back into the fore perfect uh ben thank you very much for joining me uh, we will be back tomorrow to discuss one of the next wave of the free cities draft rookies oh my god becky look at his beard it's just so weird Oh, baby!